Yeah. Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of the JMOC podcast. I'm John Mann and of course this podcast is sponsored by OrgoRetro.com and Attack Sports. Use my promo code JMOC podcast to get 15% off on OrgoRetro.com and get the best skins, gloves and equipment on AttackSport.ie. Be attack minded. And today I'm joined by former Mon and footballer Tommy Friedman to talk about his career, uh, the current uh, football uh, scenario at the minute and uh, everything that goes with it. So delighted to have Tommy today. So Tommy, how are you keeping? Good, John. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's all good here. Happy days, happy days, and it, it's great to have you on. I bumped into you in a cab in a restaurant a couple of weeks ago, so you're you're you're, you're up in a nice neck of the woods. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely was. Uh, I suppose uh, I can't say too wrong, uh, too much wrong about Cavan. Like I'm, I'm living very close to them here, uh, but as I always say, I'm just on the right side of, I'm just on the border here of Monaghan and Cavan. But uh, I suppose my mum was a good Cavan woman, and I suppose the the boss of the house, my wife, she's a, she's a cabin woman. So, uh, listen, I, I can't really say too much bad about it at all. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. You're in good hands, Tommy. You're in, you're in good hands. I can guarantee you that much. <laughs> <laughs> from all accounts, from all accounts. And I suppose, uh, Tommy, uh, before we touch on to your illustrious ca- uh, career for the Farney Army, um, we can touch on the Ulster final a couple of weekends ago against uh, Tyrone in Croke Park. Um, it, it was it was a great experience for the Monument to get back up there. But I suppose what was your uh, verdict on the game and the uh, day day itself? Yeah, well, listen, it's, it's it was obviously as you said, John, it was great to be back in an Ulster in an Ulster final, you know. But uh, it's it's like every it's like every final when when you're there, you 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 you, you want to win it. Uh, I suppose uh, just I was above at the local uh, radio station uh, doing commentary I, with Shannon Side Northern Sound, myself and Fergal Monon and. Uh, I suppose from a from a modern point of view, in the first half performance, we we you know we were kind of we were, would have been disappointed with. I, I suppose Monaghan uh, when the the dust settled and they probably got time to look back and it they'll uh, they be annoyed with themselves with the, with their own first half performance. John, uh, I just think uh, they might have shown uh, maybe to own you know a slight a wee bit too much respect. Uh, on, on the day, I think, as I said, Monaghan's, uh, we were getting a lot of success from our, our, our two wing forwards and our two wing backs through uh, Ryan McInnesby, Carl O'Connell, you know, ferocious pace, attacking, putting putting the uh, putting domain under severe pressure, popping in with the scores as well. And the same with Stephen O'Hanlon and the likes of Michael ba- uh, Bannigan, you know, which was our two half forwards as well. And I kind of, it's just, I kind of thought we had, I know, by looking on, they kind of look, kind of didn't want to concede goals and maybe try and uh, you know get a few men back and then hit Tyrone on the attack. But uh, unfortunately, that that took away from Monin's attacking threat. But uh, going on the first half performance, you have you'd, you'd have to say Tyrone were the better side, definitely the way on the first half. There's no doubt about it, and it was a hungrier side, John. The the amount of movement from them, even from the backs, right through the midfield into the forward line, was 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 unbelievable. And there was a stat here which, which would just sum it all up. At, you know, at half time, Tyrone had ten turnovers to Monaghan's five, and that tells the tale. That tells me, you know, they were the far hungrier team. They were hunting in packs. You know, any time Monaghan was was on the ball, there was you know two men around him, if not three, be times and. Uh, as I said, to own dispossessed money. And they're one of the best teams, you know, with the worst thing you can do is try and take ball into the tackle against the throne because they swarm around you like flies hey, very, very quick and they can mm-hmm. and dispossess you. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I suppose obviously Monin probably didn't get out of the traps in the first half, and we were obviously looking for big performances from the likes of Conor McManus and Jack McCarron and the likes. And I suppose uh, last what 15 20 minutes Monin did really rally Rory Beckett of course pushed up the pitch and he's been uh, famous for that since but I suppose Monin really probably need to start turning these big performances into 60 70 minute performances Tommy they definitely do John yeah you know that's uh, I suppose something they'll have to uh, look at and I'm, and I'm sure they will hey, as, as, as time goes on because you know there was a you know, there was a serious opportunity there, and you know, as you said, it was an Ulster final, and it was great to be there. But you know, you 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 want to be getting across the line. You know, I remember back in 2013, and then and you know, we we bet the uh, you know uh, massive great Donegal team, and uh, you know, it was a great you know, it was the county was starved of succession, you know, from that. So that brought a a, a good lift to the county, and then the boys retained it then and back in 2015 as well. But. Uh, 
Yeah, I suppose you, you can't say too much about the men you're after. <laughs> uh, mentioned the likes of uh, especially Conor McManus. You know, Conor has been uh, Monaghan's main threat his last eight, nine years, I maybe ten. And uh, you know, any time Conor gets the ball, you, you can always know there's uh, something special going to come. Out. But it's, it, it goes with the territory. He, he's got the profile. He's always man marks. You know, with all his two men around him, he at the same time and. Uh, that's where you, you see the likes of other men having to come into it. And I thought that's what Monaghan brought to, brought to the team and brought to the game, John, to be honest. As I said, the likes of Stephen O'Hanlon came in there, Michael uh, Michael Bannigan, uh, young Aaron Mulligan is, uh, you know, he's still young young yet from the Latin club, but, you know, he, he he's he's going to be a great prospect as well. And, you know, against Armagh, we had, we had 10 or 11 different scorers, which is a big plus and a big change for Monaghan because... Obviously, it's well documented that the bulkier scores was coming through uh, Conor McManus. But going back to the first half, to be disappointed, I, I just didn't think there was enough movement uh, uh, from the Monaghan team itself. But then in the second half, to come out, to get the first two scores of the half, John, uh, what they needed to take it back, the, the three points, uh, then they really kicked off. There was a, It was a really great game of ball. And I just thought then when Monaghan got to level and uh, point that they, they might have kicked on but then Tyrone just took the kind of uh, sting out of the, the tail a wee bit there and uh, as you said they're one of the best teams for, for man managing and seeing out games Yeah 100% 100% I suppose uh, slightly touching on Monaghan's year as well of course with the tragic passing of the young fella Bre- Brendan O'Duffy I suppose to put up such a good fight in the final uh, that weekend and obviously to get over the line against a very very talented Armagh team and the night before, uh, poor Brendan passed away, Tommy. So, all in all, not a bad year for the Farney Army. And I suppose uh, Seamus, ba- Seamus uh, Banty McEnany, he handled the whole Brendan o- uh, Duffy situation very, very well. He spoke very well in his interview. So, you know, Banty's starting to build blocks again. Yeah, he definitely is. You know, I'd have a lot of time for, for, for Banty myself. I would have spent a lot of time, you know, from uh, under 21. And then when he took the reins at the senior level underneath his management and the... Uh, there's definitely no other passionate modern man about than than Banty, you know, and he, he really is a player's man. And you know, I remember when he came he came in in 2004, he took a whole new professionalism into the to the whole new county setup, and and which was badly needed. And you can see he really kicked off from there. Monaghan really hasn't really looked back since them days, you know. And you know, I, I suppose back in days we were on the, the likes of Division uh, Three, Division Four. Seamus came in and. He, he took the reins and he, as I said, he brought that bit of professionalism to it, took us in and then we, we ended up winning a Division 2 title in 2005, you know, beating Mead, which was a, a cracker of a game in, in Crow Park that day. But you have to give it, yeah, Seamus is a, he handled the situation well, as you said, it, it was a tough time. Just to uh, touch on uh, that young man, uh, Brennan O'Duffy, an absolutely magnificent player, but most of all, John, and a lovely, lovely chap off the uh, off the field. I remember uh, we we were went down to intermediate and a championship game in uh, Casa Blaney against Mon and Harps, uh, and I was running up into my usual position, corner forward, and only because he was this young lad, and I had known him because I was after doing a bit of commentary with uh, with Sean McCaffrey on a few minor matches, and I couldn't stop raving how good this fella and the yeah. term is, and he's just absolutely put me in his pocket that night. I never got a touch of it and uh, but and I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, afraid to say that he was a he was a he was a great, great player, but a great lad and it was a just a listen, a tragic, tragic loss and so hard on his uh, his mum and dad and and his whole family and it was a uh, yeah, wasn't it was a, it was a bit of a it was a lull definitely all around the county to hear that news. And just to touch on another man who is a close to shame as the Banty himself, and actually a good friend, friend of my own, was uh, our our main sponsor, Allboro Flown in New York, the likes Philip Trainer. He had actually seen Philip. He was home for the Fermanagh match in uh, the first uh, for the first round of the Ulster Championship in in Clonus, and uh, he was just so proud there. Him and his son Ryan was at the game, and it was something you know Philip always wanted to do. Was one day he he was always on. He'd love to be the sponsor of the team, and. You know, he got his wish and uh, it was great. And then to hear the news, you know, a week later that he, he had uh, he had passed off, you know, uh, suddenly was uh, was an, another, just gobsmacked, another kick in the teeth. But uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was a tough time, you know, a tough couple of weeks there for Monaghan football. And, you know, to go out then 
the following uh, day and play um, after here and you know especially uh, Philip uh, Trainer and the sudden uh, death of running out your feet or they deserve the height of credit. 100%, 100%. And I suppose, um, isn't it great that GA can rally around? Obviously, the likes of um, Brendan O'Duffy and uh, Philip Trainer as well. It, it's a great community, really, Tommy. And obviously, when the news broke about uh, poor young Brendan as well, I've never seen such an out, out poor promotion. Um, fair play to the Monday lads, obviously, playing to get that game against our man. Obviously, Tommy, the GA, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic community. And I know we give out about maybe fixtures and schedule and everything that goes away to them, maybe Dublin's dominance. But at the end of the day, Tommy, it's a fantastic organisation. Yeah, well said, John. Definitely, it is. It's like everything else. We'll always find something to give out about and, 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 and whinge about. But, you know, when when things like this comes comes to your door, you, you know, it, gee, uh, you know it, it helps out an awful lot. I'm not saying it, 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 it takes away all the pain, but just it's just uh, it, it, it helps the... Just helps it to ease the pain that wee bit for you know a wee a small amount of time and uh, you know I was looking at the the under twenties team that Brennan was captain of just like to give them young boys a mention because it wouldn't it was definitely wasn't easy for them to, to play and then also final uh, you know a, a week later against Down and I have to give great credit to Connor Lafferty and his uh, backroom team and and the Down team as well they showed such great respect even when the whistle was blowing. There's no celebrating, and I I think just big shout out to them boys. It was it was it was to our credit, and it was great to see it. But you know, I was looking at uh, Brennan's father doing an interview on on, on TG4. The strength of the man to be fit to come out and do that, John, was just magnificent. You know, your your heart goes out to them. But you know, it's time like this now when when kind of the whole football in, in the county scene dies down now is there. Uh, Hopefully, people can still rally round and you know help uh, Brennan, uh, Brennan's family out, and even and you know Philip Trainers as well. You know when things settle down, this is when they they need uh, the help when it's when it's badly needed. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And again, I, I touched on it in the previous podcast, but definitely the ser- sincerest condolences go out to Philip and uh, Brendan, O'Duff- o- Brendan O'Duffy's family because it cannot be easy. And fair play to uh, the Down uh, management team, obviously, and everyone not celebrating. And even uh, Brendan's mum and dad going to the Down game and uh, the final, I really don't know where they got the strength from. So fair play to all involved. And uh, the very best wishes for the future for them. I suppose, uh, Tommy, we're here today, obviously, to talk about your uh, luscious career for the uh, Farney Army. You t- uh, you played from 2001 to 2013. You tagged on one of title, one National League, and that illustrious All-Star as well. So, great time to yourself. And uh, Tommy Freeman got the ball rolling in 2001. Yeah, uh, a good while ago now, John. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe 20 years ago. To be honest with you, but uh, yeah, listen, it was something I always uh, wanted to do. You know, was you know, obviously, uh, you 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 play with your club, and that's that's most important. And but you always want, like to be fit one and represent your 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 county and throw on your county jersey. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm very thankful that was something I, I got to do. And but uh, you know, yeah, it's it's like everything else, John. You, you have to be dedicated. You have to you have to make sacrifices and. Let me tell you, there was a lot of sacrifices made down through the down through the years, and there might have been another uh, row here and there, no holidays and no stuff like that. But listen, uh, as I said, uh, I, I I good support with my uh, my my wife now that she was uh, my girlfriend back then, and uh, she supported me all the way, so she deserves a lot of credit on my family as well. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, some tough days, a lot of tough days actually, but. Uh, some good days too to look back on, John. 100%, 100%. And obviously, you uh, referenced the National League title win against me. And Tommy, like I was, I was watching back, I think that there was a video up with you of like a collage with the scores you kicked and goals you got over the years. And like, I suppose when football was good as well, Tommy, the likes of 05, 04, 07, probably when all this kind of defensive nonsense for want of a better word came in, Tommy. So nice flowing football, maybe one man on you. And Tommy Freeman was skinning every man that was on him. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say I skinned every man, but uh, I know it, it was great. And I suppose uh, that's all I was used to. You know, it was kind of man on man, back on forward and, uh, you know, uh, get the ball in and take your man on or lay it off. And I suppose uh, they, were, they were good old days. And I think that's what the spectators was missing there, John, especially when this whole new defensive system came in. And I, I even found it there when it started coming round, you know, 11, 12, and even in 13, it was, 
it was kind of it was, it was to be honest with you it was kind of hard to adapt it because you were so used to just playing the the, the natural style as I'd call it how you know where uh, man on man and let the ball in and try and win it if you were good enough to win your corner you were good enough and if you weren't you weren't you just have to hold your hands up and but I suppose you, it, with this defensive style you just had to be try and be patient and there's kind of you're kind of up and down the field no matter what position you're lying out if you're lying down in corner forward you could find yourself up in the, the corner back position and opposite side of the field but uh yeah, it was something, to be honest with you, John, if you want me to answer straight, it was something I didn't like. I definitely did not like it. I, and, I, and I still don't like the, the blanket defence, but it's like everything else. You just have to roll with the times. And But I think now, I think it's just starting to, to open up a wee bit now again, which is great to see. And I even uh, have some commentary there for the, uh, the Donegal uh, morning game in the National League above in uh, Bally Buffet. And what a treat we got to see. It was just unbelievable. Monaghan got, you know, four goals in the first half. I think Monaghan had four nine actually at, at, at half time in that match. If 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 I'm stand, I stand to be correct in that score, but I think it was four nine. But Monaghan, uh, then again, you could say, whereas the defence, Donegal wouldn't have been happy with the defence, you know, which the world wide open that day. But it's just it's just very easy in the eye, and I think the spectators is is is, is happy to see us oh, it's starting to open up a wee bit more again. 100%, 100%. Going back to 01, 20 years ago, Tommy, as you're saying, I, I don't know where the years are going, really. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It just feels like we've wasted time in this COVID. Two years have basically passed by, Tommy. But uh, 2001, Tommy, uh, obviously you're probably playing in under 16 minor panels. And to break on to 2001 to the modern senior footballers, Tommy, I'm presuming that's something you always wanted to do. Yeah, John, it, it was great. It was actually funny enough. I actually played one year with minor. And then I went on to play with the you know, within the same year, I went on to play with me on the, with the under twenty ones, and I was actually playing very well for the under twenty ones. Now I'm the first man to admit, and I many's a game, I definitely many's a bad games, you know, and I'd be always the man to put my hand up. But I was I was playing really well, you know, when I went from minor into tw- under twenty ones, I was playing really well with the under twenty ones, and uh, that was it. So I played away with them, and we played Tyrone, uh, lo and behold, in an under twenty one semi final below in in Bally Bay. And of course, uh, they, they pipped us that day by a pint, another epic battle, but we just ended up on the, on the wrong side of the score sheet again against uh, against Tyrone. But uh, anyway, we, we came home that night and uh, obviously I was living, still living at home with my parents at the time. And I uh, came in the next morning, I, I, I found the, the brother came in uh, came into the, the bedroom and he says, uh, which was Damien, he says to me, uh, you may get out of bed. Uh, and I says, what are you all about? And he says, uh, Jack McCarvel was over the team at the time. Jack McCarvel rang me and he says uh, he, he wants you in for a challenge match uh, against Tyrone uh, the following morning above in uh, Healy Park in Oma. And I says, uh, I said, I, you know, I was laying asleep on a top bunk bed at the time, uh, John. And uh, I says, I'll get out of here. You're, 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 you're pulling me leg. He says, I'm telling you, you're not. We have to leave here now in 15 minutes. <laughs> and I, he says, if you're not ready, I'm going on without you. So when you... As soon as he said that, I never came down the leather. I jumped straight down to the bed. So I, I, I couldn't believe it. So uh, of course, I had to rely on my mum. She, uh, she had me stuff ready at the time, got my gear ready, and uh, I just double checked it and out the door went. And yeah, on to to play a challenge match against Tyrone, as I said. And obviously, yeah, uh, I went in, and you know, it was quite daunting going into a, a senior uh, setup at the time. You know, into the dressing room and. You know, all the boys, the likes of Declan Smiths and, you know, the Declan McKernans and all, all these boys, John Paul Moan and these, uh, you know, welcoming me into the squad, which was great. And that, that kind of uh, settled things down. So when you, you do what you do, you, you talk out and you do the warm up. And obviously I was on the bench and uh, I was looking on. And so first half passed away and uh, Jack McCarville uh, called us in and he says, uh, we want you to, uh, you know, strip down and get ready. What you're going to be starting on the second half. So I said, I couldn't believe it. I said, so I, uh, I, I started getting uh, my my wet gear off. At the time it was a, it was a wet day, as you can as you can imagine, John. And all I could remember when I was looking up at me idol, the opposite side of the pitch. How when he came out for the second half was Peter Canavan. Oh, the man I idolised for years, and I uh, still do. And little did I think that I'd. Uh, then for a couple of years after play against them, but it was quite, it was a, it was a, it was daunting at the time. But of course, who who uh, came to pick me up? Only another stalwart, Chris Lawn. Oh jeez. 
Thank you, myself. <laughs> what am I doing here? You know, but uh, and yeah, it uh, it happened to go very well, John. I actually scored five points in the uh, in in that half, and I actually got uh, the man who was on the free take and was was after you know uh, going off, and yeah, and so I was Jack shouted out to just take the free, so I took two frees and I got three from play. So uh, it wasn't a bad day's out and high. But as I says, any time you get yeah a couple of scores on the likes of Chris Law and high, and uh, yeah, you can never complain. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, and no better men to kind of start up against. And suppose Tommy, them early days, how enjoyable was it on play? I know at the start of the podcast we did reference enjoyable times, but and no blankets, all out attacking football really at the end of the day. So how enjoyable was it now compared to the likes of 2012 and 2013, Tommy? Yeah, listen, it was grand. But as I said, when we first went in, uh, we were we were in like Division Three and Division Four, so it was uh, it was it was tough. Then you know we had no centre of excellence either. We were going down and we were training the likes of St. McCartan's in a uh, below in Monon Town, which is you know was 45 minute spin for the likes of myself here on South Monon. But uh, you know, it was something you, you you didn't mind doing, you know, you, would, you had to be down there on the field for race. You're running through, especially in the winter months of very muddy conditions, and uh, you were going around, uh, you know, the different that time you're asking clubs for the length of the pitch, you know, because as I said, we had no center of excellence. and. But the times were good. As I said, there were some there were some tough days, and you know, you know, in Division Three and Division Four is not the place where you wanted to be. But as I said, we 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 gradually, you know, came on, and we, you know, we started uh, getting promotion back in the Division Three, and then in the Division Two, and you know, we when Seamus came in in two thousand and four, we haven't really looked back since, and I think now this is our eighth or ninth year now in Division One with the boys. But you know, it was good times. Yeah, we 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 had. Uh, we had we had good times too, but some 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 tough days as well, you know. And uh, traveling the likes of a uh, down to Waterford there of a of a Saturday evening to play a Division Four league match of a Sunday, you know, it was a uh, it wasn't the uh, the place where you wanted to be, but it's where we were, John, at the time, and you just had to get on with it and do what we done, and that's what we did. We uh, thankfully uh, we haven't looked back since. <laughs> and his former Antrim footballer Kevin McGordy says it's like a four-day camel ride to go up to Waterford so I don't know what it was like Tommy yeah. so it was a uh, quite a long track as well uh, yeah it definitely was but uh, as I said thankfully we haven't uh, we haven't looked back since and we're on the top here football now this last uh, eight or nine years but uh, yeah yes but it was good yeah, as I said yeah we that's what we were at the time and we just had to get on with and and, and do what we done Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, was Tommy? Obviously, when you look back in the likes of 05 and 04 and 03, you had Tyrone at the peak of the powers, you had Armagh at the peak of the powers, absolutely flying at Donegal to a lesser extent as well. And I suppose ourselves, Cavan, Monaghan, really the chasing pack, Tommy. So, I suppose how hard was it, maybe in the likes of 05, 03, them years, to compete against the might of Armagh and Tyrone? Yeah, it was very tough, uh, John. To be quite honest, with you, you know, we all knew it, it, they were uh, coming from you know. Reigning on Ireland champions, Armand, and I, you know, Colin Coyle uh, came in, and we actually overturned them in Clonus uh, that day, which was a which was a massive win for us. And uh, as I said, the, the reigning on Ireland champions, Armand, did, did so did so marquee men, the likes of Kieran McGinley, Paul McGrain, the Stevie McDonalds, uh, Oshi McConville's, the McNulty's. You know, you could just you could just go on and on, and. Uh, yeah, it was a big scalp for us that day, but it was it was very hard to compete, you know. But you know, Monon was trying to, you know, you know, just make that step forward and you know, in get everything kind of a professionalism set up. And he, as I said, getting back to Seamus again when he came in, he he started that rolling again, and then he took us to his uh, under his management of first Ulster final in two thousand and seven. Then again, you came up against All Ireland champions, uh, you know, quality again in, in Tyrone. The likes of Sean Cavanagh, the Philip Jordans, the Conor Gormleys, the, uh, the likes of the Peter Canavans, the Stephen O'Neill, the Owen Mulligans, like where do you be all household names? Ryan McMenamin, a man that you could you could dedicate a podcast to him. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, well, listen, Racy and the likes of Conor Gormley, they were they were, they were definitely they were tough boys, but uh, <laughs> the boys, John, I actually have great respect for because there's yeah. one thing. About what what I like about players, I know when you're on the field, you have to do things, you know, to get across the line and to win. But when you're off the field, what I like about about any individual is that they'll talk to you and show you respect. You know what I'm saying? And, and to me, that's that's as good as anything. You know, once 
when they, you know, once you leave everything on the field and then you meet each other. And I remember, you know, myself and Racy, we ended up being teammates, funny enough, and Conor Gormley with the Interprovincial, uh, you know, with Ulster uh, campaign. And, you know, it, it, it back uh, years ago, it all ran over a two day uh, weekend, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, there was a bit of crack on them weekends too with the boys. And I suppose it was nice to, uh, it was nice to, you know, to get playing with the likes of them boys, you know, as as a teammate. But uh, yeah, there's one thing about uh, when you when you weren't into provincial uh, uh, competition, like, the the Ulster boys would definitely stick up for each other. That's one thing I'd have to say. But yeah, go, going back to your question, John, of course it was very tough. You know, we didn't help ourselves in 2007 in that Ulster final. We give Tyrone a quality team a, a seven point lead. You know, at the start of the first half, and we clawed it back and. Second half, a seven point lead at the start of that half during the first five or ten minutes. And then we start to really come into the game and we, we had to pin back. And uh, we, you know, the crowd got behind us. Uh, you know, I, I got a goal there. Finney Curry has moved up in the full four and Finney done a lot of graph work and you know, put a lot of pressure, turned the game nearly. And he, he fed me the ball and it happened. To, I took a shot and happened to rattle in the back of the net. And that kind of got the crowd behind our backs. And you know, we got a couple more points and we had them back to two points. And I imagine Vinny took, the, you know, took a great ball out of the clouds, as we call it up here. And the, he turned, he sold a lovely solo dummy, took the shot and it was just cleared off the line. It actually would have put us a point up and maybe got us across the line, but just wasn't to be, you know. And I suppose that was a, a tough pill, uh, a tough pill to swallow, but uh, it just wasn't to be that day either, John. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. But well, I, I know Conor Gormley well, so we could try and maybe get a Tommy Freeman, Conor Gormley chat going soon enough, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, listen, uh, I, many of the battles against Conor. Yeah. Uh, absolute, listen, tremendous player. Uh, very, very, very dedicated player, man. And uh, yeah, actually, myself and, myself and Conor, you know, we would have probably only bumped into each other, literally bumped into each other on the, on the football pitch. But uh, I remember... We had to go up to uh, around Bray area in, in in Wicklow to do a bit of a to do a bit of a photo shoot for Club Energize. You know this was a uh, which was great to uh, to do it. So we got to spend uh, I think it was two or three nights up uh, up in the hotel there, and then we were taken away to some site to do this kind of a, a kind of a video clip. It was called. So it, it was good. Few nights, sensible few nights, was it? <laughs> yeah. It actually was. Well, it was. It had to be sensible for me because I tell you, Seamus McEnany had a had a had a show for uh, up and down. Uh, you know, them days for me above the brain, no matter how far I was. And back down when I was finished, I, he made sure I was back at training and clocking. And then I had to be dropped back up to uh, <laughs> to Bray again. And uh, he had organised uh, a, a, a good man of mine. He he, he runs a the business there, John McManaman. He was the man that got the job of collecting me and then take me back to training and then take me back up the road after training. So, uh, but th- yeah, it was good. This one was good to get uh, chatting the, the con on. You know, there was a few boys, like said, Baron of Brogan and uh, Declan O'Sullivan and them boys was above on, on the football side of things. And then there was a few boys from the, the likes of Ken McGrath, John Milan and the boys from the Horn side. And, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was good to, uh, Good. It was a good bit of crack with them boys, I have to admit. So, uh, and it was a good experience. But yeah, Connor definitely is a hard man on the pitch. Very good, tough hitting man, and a great football on. So, you know, as he says, he's a couple of our medals under his belt. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I suppose uh, Tommy, the Ulster Championship over the years when you were playing in it, uh, as I've always said to kind of former players, it's it's probably you're at the peak of your powers. Sunny day in Clonus, Brefley Park, anywhere at all, Brewster Park. No better times to be playing football, Tommy. Yeah, definitely. They were the days you look forward to, you know, heading to Clonus, especially when it's the final day. And you see, you know, the streets lined and, you know, a full house. And remember that 2007 uh, Ulster final, it was just a full house. You're coming out from the tunnel, running on, you're looking onto the hill, and all you're seeing is a I see a blue and white, and obviously the colours of Tyrone as well. It was I, I don't think there was an empty seat that day, but uh, obviously Monaghan hadn't been, you know, in an Ulster final, you know, for a long time before that, and uh, it was very unfortunate. Uh, John, we didn't end up on the winning side, but listen, you know, you have to take these knocks and and, and move on, and and we did, and you know, we hadn't any time to rest in our laurels. I feel sorry for ourselves after that uh, 07 defeat because. Uh, we had to move on and we were drawn against a very strong Donegal team. 
above in the Healy Park in Oma. And I don't know if it was the right venue like for because it was absolutely a uh, chock and rock to all like sardines and it and I never seen such a, a crowd at a match in, in my life. But uh, it was another magnificent game. We we absolutely performed very well. Obviously, you know, we 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 uh, we bet Donegal that day. And so then uh, the following week week later, or maybe it was a two week uh, layoff, we went back to Crow Park and against Kerry. <laughs> Another match that yeah, kind of wanna forget about, but uh, uh one we definitely left behind, I felt. Yeah, hundred percent. And so it's Tommy, it's interesting to kind of hear your perspective on that. As I said, a lot of former players, like with 07, if someone of games of 2007, would they ever kind of come back to haunt? Like if you ever kind of when you're ever thinking about football, I know we had a bit of time during COVID to watch back games and stuff. But like them kind of games, Tommy, would they come back ever in your in your mindset, or is it kind of just kind of looking forward to, with the club? Or oh yeah, well listen, as I said, I'm not one for dwelling on it, but I, I'll have to admit the likes of the. You know, especially when it was your first Ulster final, you know, you were involved in an 07, you, you, you kind of, all you were hoping for was that, you know, you wanted to win that Ulster medal, you wanted to you wanted to win the Ulster uh, title, you know, for, for for the county, you know, for your teammates, for for the management team, you know, for your family. But unfortunately, it, it, it just didn't happen. But also, uh, as I said, the, the Kerry game, the, you know, the Tyrone game was, was, was hard to swallow. But as I said, we had much time to... Uh, to rest on our laurels, John. We, as I said, we had to prepare for Donegal a week later, and we done that. Got over that game. Great game it was, as I said before, and went up to Kerry. And so, obviously, with the the household names Kerry had and all the all Ireland they had underneath their belts, Monaghan wasn't given much of a chance. But we performed very, very well that day. Definitely, that was one we left behind, John. And it's, 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 it's you know. As I said, at the end of the day, it's it's no good. We 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 didn't win the game. And that was it. And then you looked at Kerry going on and winning that whole Ireland final by fourteen points. You know, beating the the, the road rivals Cork too. But yeah, going into that, I have never been in a worse dressing room in my entire life than that uh, Cope Park one after that defeat in 07 because I think he had led that game if if I'm if I'm right in saying for 65, 66 minutes we were we were ahead of. Uh, Kerry that day and you know Kerry took a Kerry had a massive squad and you know I suppose with the size of our county and you know they, they, they pulled a few boys off the bench and the boys they pulled off the bench that day had had a massive impact I think one tree he came off the bench that day possibly in the last 10-12 minutes of the game and you know all of a sudden uh, that was the that was the that was the final uh, nail in the coffin for us you know we were, ended up being that be a point and you know, so near, but yet so far away. And but uh, go back into the dressing room, though there wasn't much said for for a long time. And so then uh, Seamus had to come out, and he had the uh, you know he'd media the he'd uh, you know deal with the media side of things as well. But he he addressed the team, and so you know he was obviously bitterly disappointed with with the uh, with the loss after coming so close. But uh, yeah, that one. Uh, that one stung for a good while in my memory, to be honest with you, John. I'm I actually I'm not a man for dwelling on things, but uh, it's like everything else. As as the days and months and years went on, you kind of uh, got the uh, got it out of your system. And as you said, we had, we had the, the club football to look forward to after that, which was a great distraction, you know, when trying to get back, yeah, back to basics. And that's that's what that's what that's what we done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I suppose what it was like to kind of come up against the kingdom in 2007, because at the end of the day, Tommy. That's probably when they're coming into the peak of the powers, as you're saying, Declan Sullivan, the Gooch, Star Donaghy, starts three team and he's put in a serious effort against them. And so was Tommy, when you're looking around, I know you don't get much time to like in, in Croke, but when you're looking back in the video or on the field against some of these greats, Tommy, you're at the peak of your powers. You got an all star that year. So um it's it's stuff of dreams, really. Yeah, John, it was, to be quite honest, yeah. Uh... It was great, you know, the, the the rub shoulders with them boys for years, many years, and uh, you know, made some good friends out of it. And I remember that day, so it's like everything else. I was walking into the corner for the position, and so who did I see coming to, to pick me up? Only the likes of uh, Mark O'Shea, you know, uh, an absolutely, you know, serious footballer, great respect from him. And uh, we we had a good battle that day. To be honest, you know. Uh, but just one thing I'd say about Mark, it was it was all football, you know. He was don't get me wrong, he was tough, tenacious, 
but uh, there was ball all the way and we had a good ding dong battle that day hey so we had but you know I, I happened to get as you said uh, you mentioned it John not me, me I got me own all star in 2007 I'm, I'm not a man really for uh, mention it uh, that very often but obviously as a player as a youngster growing up obviously one of the things you wanted to do was you know put on your uh, club jersey put on your county jersey try and be successful win an Ulster title win an all Ireland. that's you know top of the agenda unfortunately I never got the chance to uh, was lucky enough to, to, to win an all Ireland. but uh, yeah it was great and it got me all star in the, in the 2007 but uh, which, which was great uh, on an in, on an individual thing. It was it was it was a great it was a great achievement, and it was uh, it was great to get one. As I said, when you when you when you're young and you're looking up at these, and you see all these all star nights on on the on the TV, you, you you'd be saying to yourself, "Quite, you know, it's, you'd love to be there, and you'd love to win one." But you know, where uh, it, it it it's to me, it was always about the team. In the matter of all, there was never any individual, as I said, that's an individual accolade, and that's something I'll never forget, and that's something I'll cherish till till the day I till the day I go. Uh, John, to be honest, I, I, you know, it's uh, sitting up here in a in a on a mental piece in 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 uh, one of my living rooms, so it's uh, it's something to look back, and it, it, it was great to get. It definitely was, you know, you're rubbing shoulders with what you with the best uh, with the best players in in, in that year. But you know, if it wasn't for my, uh, if it wasn't for my teammates and and the whole panel, you know, that that time these things wouldn't be possible. You know what I'm saying? Because as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole team and panel performance. And you know, if you're if you're happy enough, you know, if the if the boys out the field wasn't winning the ball in in in, in defence and busting out with it, and the boys. We get much ball uh, in, uh, to, you know, for us to do the uh, do the damage. But yeah, listen, to get an all sound two thousand seven, John w- 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 was brilliant. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I suppose Tommy, over the years when, like, I suppose before McManus and the boys all came about. But I suppose in them early years, did you ever feel like kind of added pressure on yourself to kind of go out and deliver the goods, or were you just kind of focusing on your own game and uh, fulfilling your own goals? Yeah, listen. Yeah, exactly, John. I was just. Uh, I, I. I. didn't feel pressure. No, I. I. I didn't. To be quite honest, with you, as I said, we. Uh, you know. You know, when we lose, when we win together, we lose together, and that's. You know, that's a. That's a. a, a an old saying, but it's, it's a very true saying. And I just went out. I. I. You know, always studied on what I could bring to the good for of the good of the team. And as I said, if if it wasn't the boys getting the ball into us. We wouldn't be fit to do too much, but uh, no, I focused uh, heavily uh, on, on on my strengths and you know stuff I had to work on that 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 make me a better player and make me a, a better team player as well. And uh, you know, I looked after myself. I was very dedicated to the thing. There was no such thing as you know, in county football started. You know, the drinking was a no go because you know, even though the, the times you could have, you could have a couple, you know, and and you know, on a on a break, you know, if there's a two week break, you know, you know, might allow uh, you know a few drinks, but it's something I could never do. You know, I know there's, there's certain players could do it and it wouldn't affect them, but I just I always kind of affect. It just affected me. It, it, it maybe knocked me back a couple of days, so. I, I kind of I'd stayed off it as as, as long as you know. Don't get me wrong, John. I like a pint you now. Like <laughs> we all have us, we all like a, a pint. But uh, back them days, uh, yeah, I, I was very dedicated to thing, which you have to be because you know you're you're, you're there to be knocked, and there's always somebody there, you know, you know, willing to ready and to step up and take and take your jersey off you. So uh, you always had to be on your on your on your toes, John. To be honest with you. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So like anything else in life, I suppose Tommy. And I suppose pushing on uh, from them years, and I, I suppose oh seven, you you um, got to the uh, game against Kerry and Croke Park, reaching the highest of highs. And I suppose two thousand eight, the likes of Throne again were really coming good, and in Ulster, and I suppose Donegal were moving up the ranks, and Armagh. So I suppose after maybe oh seven, Tommy, and maybe up until maybe two thousand twelve or thirteen, was there a bit of a lull, or, or what did you make of some of them years? Yeah, well, it's a. <laughs> I suppose in uh, after '07, you know, where we, we uh, I think we we were playing Derry above in Celtic Park in the Ulster Championship, and uh, 
you know, it was another it, it was another battle, and I, I just think a couple of a uh, a couple of bad calls went against us that day. Not, you know, I'm not really one to say it was calls and blaming refs and that, but a couple of tight calls and, you know, it was, it was that kind of a game. You know, these smaller margins was costly, uh, John, but uh, I think it was Derry that whipped us above in Celtic Park that day. And uh, But we, we, we came back again, you know, when we we we, uh, we regrouped after that and we got a good run in the qualifiers and then we ended up Meeting Kerry again, the last I think it was the last sixteen uh, of that uh, campaign and and uh, another battle, but obviously we came out on the wrong side of it. And there was a wee bit of a lull then, as he said, but then in two thousand and ten, you know, uh, Seamus and his uh, backroom team uh, guided us back to the to the Ulster final again. Tyrone, I seem to be mentioning Tyrone a lot in this. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as I said, you know, that's as you said, John yourself. There were serious teams, or they were winning all Ireland, they were winning all stuff. Uh, we come back, we would have been very disappointed now, especially with our 0 10 performance. We just never, never performed, never got out of the traps at all. And, uh, you know, as you said, we got, I think we got a, a fair drop, and I think it was nine or ten points. We, we, we lost that all the final, and it was just. It was a it was a long drive home. Let me tell you from Clonus, and all you wanted to do was uh, you came in through the door and you put your bag in the corner, and that was it. Yeah. You didn't want to face anyone or see anyone, and but because uh, we're just disappointed that you didn't perform. You know, you know, you're always very disappointed when you when you lose any game, John. And I suppose that's a good thing to see in a person because you know they re- you know that they, re- they really want us. But uh, it was just a performance that day was a uh, was a uh, wasn't was just wasn't good enough, and we we were punished punished uh, punished badly by by a, a very strong Tyrone team and. Yeah, and then I suppose uh, you know I think Owen McEnany came in then, and there was a, a kind. Of, I think Mona was a kind of in a bit of transition zone at the time, as you said, and uh, we'd kind of start uh, slipping back, and I think we slipped back into the Division Three. I think it was, and uh, it's just uh, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. Down, it was. It was down to no one's fault. It's just that you know every county has their transition years, and it just maybe. People say it, it takes that when you start slipping, it's just hard to stop. But then again, Malik O'Rourke came in. Malik, uh, you know, was a fresh face and, and a new backroom team. And, you know, obviously he was an outside man as well. And he brought he brought different uh, setups and different things. As every, as every different manager would, John, take, you know, different uh, ideas to it as well. And he started... You know, guiding us back to where we were and got us back and he had a couple of a couple of league wins and took us back to Division One and of course he guided us back to all the final in twenty thirteen against a uh, very fancy Donegal team and uh, so Jimmy Guinness and Rory Geller was over them and so uh, it was I don't think Mullen was given much of a chance that day but as I said we were after uh, beating uh, Antrim in the first round below in Casement Park. Funny enough, and uh, we went on and we met uh, Calvin. I would say, John, but uh, we did Calvin and clone us. And, you know, it was obviously, it was, it was another tough task, uh, tussle as these local derbies always is. Money and Calvin is, 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 is never easy to, and there's never too much between them. But we got across the line that day. Obviously, Conor McManus had a, had a, had a, had a great performance, kicked some serious points and uh, led us back to clone us in 2013 against Donegal. It also final and uh, I just something just felt right that day. Warm, warm day, you know, full St. Shanox Park and Clone as I and uh, it was just the build up to it, John was brilliant. Uh, just you know, you know, we we'd meet up and we'd get a, a bit of a pre match meal and go through a few uh, tactics and uh, you know uh, then what a warm up would be. So we knew what we were at the minute we, we hit the pitch and the, but the bus drive then from there and on up, the, you know, you're climbing the hill and you're looking at both sets of support. There was just, it make the hair stand on the back of your neck and to go out. And then the boys put in the performance. I was just magnificent, you know. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Monin deserved that uh, performance. We were the best team from start to finish. I have no queries about that. Uh, obviously, we, we you had to show Donegal a certain amount of respect after what they were doing the year or two previous. And, uh, and and we did, but you just you can't show them uh, too much either. And the boys got stuck in in from start to finish, and you know uh, got some great scores. And 
Uh, as you know yourself, the West was history, uh, John. We uh, we went on and we 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 won the one the Ulster title, which was just magnificent. That one of the best feelings uh, of my career. One hundred percent, Tommy. One hundred percent. Suppose you mentioned uh, Malachi Rourke obviously coming in um, after Eamon McInerney. I suppose Malachi he, he he's left a couple of years ago now, and I suppose it's it's uh, Banty McInerney back in the hot seat. But what all did uh, Malachi change for the morning senior footballers, Tommy? Because I think a lot of lads were sad to see him go at the time when he did go, and it just even by listening to you, he just sounded like he just changed the whole uh, mindset, Tommy. He did, yeah. Maliki, Maliki, and his, his backroom team, yeah. Tactically, he was very, very, he was spot on. He was very good, a very good technician there, John. Uh, I suppose the way the game was going, you know, this defensive setup, we'd work on many and many different things in training and. You know, he 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 drill it home to us, and all of a sudden it just it, it start coming the clockwork. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, no point telling you what blanket defence was. You were getting plenty of man back, and then you were breaking at pace, and uh, he set up too. And he, he was what did he bring different? than, as I said, every every manager and backroom teams has 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 different setups. But he it was mainly it was horses for courses, John. That's the best way I could put it for you. It was horses, of course. If, if Maliki and his team didn't think, you know, X, Y, or Z didn't suit this certain game, eh, you weren't starting. It's no matter how good you were in the previous game or how poor you were, does not mean you wouldn't start the next game or you, or you would start the next game. You know, it was, he wasn't afraid to make them calls. And I suppose if you did happen to have a good game and come the next game and you weren't starting, you'd say to yourself, mm, I, I, I can't understand this, but... Eh, there's one thing he'd always come and he'd tell you why and he'd explain us and then you wouldn't, you know, you'd, you'd accept it and that's it. You, you, there's no point there whinging over it and you have to just, and that's what, you know, people, had, you know, every player had a lot of respect from because of that. So you just knew where he was coming from and most of it he got, most of the time he got spot on, John, to be honest with you now, because his, his record went on and stands, stands for itself and, uh, you know, he's a couple of league uh, big titles and he's two also titles on those belts so uh, yeah Maliki Maliki was a very good man and as I said but tactically wise he was he, he was a, he was very shrewd and not afraid to make make big calls yeah 100% and I suppose obviously Tommy you were referencing uh, the same final in 2013 and years previous we would have played it numerous times even since you've retired uh, back in 2013 there so the rivalry obviously against uh, the near neighbours Tommy uh, hot and spicy at times Oh, it does, yeah. Listen, it's hard. It does be, but it's it's uh, especially where I am here, John. How much is in the bother? Like I'm, I do uh, I, I I do go in uh, to local towns here beside me in Calf and the likes of Kingscourt and and Shercup beside me. And I I listen. I have many and many good friends there. But and it's always be a good bit of banter. And even uh, I, I get to enjoy it now when you're not playing. You, you if you go in before a couple a couple of nights before a match, maybe or maybe after a game, and you know. Uh, Monin's best or Tyrone wins or uh, uh, Monin's best and Calvin's best and especially when we meet each other the, the crack just be it just be good and uh, don't get me wrong now John as a player I'm sure it's, it's the same on the Calvin side when when you're a player when Calvin Monin meets obviously you want to win you, you know you, you, you want to win that game and you know uh, especially with the bragging rights as well to be honest with you but uh, no listen it's a uh, on the field, it can be feisty, but uh, at the same time, good respect for each other too. And But as I said, off the field, it, it'd be a good bit of banter and a, a, a bit of crack, to be honest with you, John. Yeah, 100%. It's a game I always look forward to, definitely in the calendar year, if we ever are playing yourselves. And I suppose, Tommy, obviously winning the OC title in 2013, you kicked the point near the end. You finally get your hands on an Ulster title, Tommy. So, as you said, probably the best day of your life. Yeah, it was definitely go down as one of the one of the many. John, it was it was great. As I said, I was after putting in a lot of a lot of hard years and a lot of miles. And you know, but I consider myself lucky to be honest with you, John, it, it, because uh, there was many of other players that I I soldier it down through the years. You know, uh, and you know they know who they are. I don't want to start mentioning because I'd be afraid I'd leave some of them out. But they know who they are. And, Unfortunately, they had just called time, and some of them just had called time. Maybe you know if they just had to hung on, you see. But uh, obviously, it just wasn't me, or they couldn't do that. And I suppose I always came myself lucky enough that I uh, I stayed about, and I I actually kept myself, you know, 
I was in good shape and I felt I could uh, con- uh, contribute to the team. And uh, but it was great getting, you know, when that final whistle went and you know, seeing uh, the crowd spilling onto the field and Monan finally getting over the line. So it was great, John. It was it was all, all a new experience for me. No matter how long, I, you know, I was one of the oldest experienced uh, players on the team. You know, uh, that year and uh, but it was great and to watch the boys go up the steps of. Uh, Clonus and St. Shamrock's Park and, and lift Anglo Cell Cup was a uh, something that lived me for for a long time. Yeah, great day, great day, and a great day for for the whole county and and, and all. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I suppose uh, it's like anything else. He's came up against Throne in the All Ireland quarter final, and probably a game uh, famous for. Uh, Mr. Joe Brawley's quotes about uh, a certain Mr. Uh, Sean Cavanagh. So, I suppose your last game uh, for Monaghan as well, Tommy, uh, on record. So, uh, what was that day like? I suppose, you know, Tyrone, obviously, Tyrone do what they do and Croke Park always kind of find a way to win no matter what. So, uh, your, your last game, Tommy, probably a, 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 a bit of a nine way to finish up. It was, John, yeah. It, uh... I suppose going back to that that famous incident, I, I listen. I don't want to talk about about it to be quite honest because I, I, I've actually I've good respect to uh, for Sean Kevin, but obviously it 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 didn't help matters. If it hadn't happened, the man that had the ball was probably you know nine times a would have uh, left it sitting in the back of the net, you know, and it, it was just. But you know he done what he had to do, as he said for for the team, and of call it was a tough call. Yeah, it, listen, it, obviously. There's another epic battle, and one we we came up short uh, against, you know, thrown again. But uh, yeah, it wasn't the way I probably wanted to finish up. I wasn't actually, I didn't think it was actually. I wasn't planning on giving up, but just other things. Just uh, as the months went on, and uh, I suppose the whole Celtic Tiger and everything was after crash, and you know, here and work was scarce, and then there was you had you know the. Maybe you had to take a new route and, and go. You were starting a new job, and it just it just didn't help it. And you know the hours that I was that I was going into now in this new job of mine back then, it was just uh, it was kind of affecting me training. To be quite honest, with you. and uh, I tried to uh, work around it the best I could. But you know, obviously a call had to be made at some stage by by the management, and uh, it's just that uh, I would have liked. I suppose I thought I. I could have given it, a, you know, a, at least another year. I felt that uh, I was still in good shape. Uh, but most of all, I, I thought I'd, I'd still a wee bit tough for the team. But as it says, football's football. And, uh, but it doesn't pay the bills, John. I, I was after starting, as you said, I was, I'd, I'd done carpentry for 17 years, uh, you, you know, with men here in the parish, my, my local parish. And, you know, I, I left school at Dummy Junior Cert and I was on site at 16 years of age. and walking away and then all of a sudden when the Celtic Tiger which affected a lot of people John yeah a lot of people had you know work had dried up and so I just you know I, I kind of I found myself kind of out of work tipping away with a few wee bits myself and uh, I was just you know we were starting I was just a young child at the time me Killian he was the he was the child at the time and we were just after moving into the house you know a couple of years before that so I, yeah, I had to get in, uh, go and look for a new job, and obviously that that, that entailed shift work. So uh, of of course, uh, the first thing that came into my head, right, what am I going to do? Football, this is not going to, just not going to be so. But uh, we'll try and work around it the best they can, and it just it just wasn't to be. And you know, I, I had the as tough as tough as was the take uh, to realise that. That was it. Your know, football career was uh, coming to an end, and you know I just had to accept it. And uh, once it once it wasn't uh, suiting, uh, especially the team. Once it wasn't uh, suiting the team, and it, you know if everyone wasn't happy, I'm singing the same hymn sheet, John. You know where uh, a call had to be made, and of course when you have a uh, you know it's like everyone else when you have a young family and obviously bills to pay and the mortgage, like ev- like like a lot of people in in the in the world, you know. Uh, your work's very important. So, uh, yeah, it ended up being my last game, as it says. Uh, but this is it's funny enough, John, it's so, it was bitterly disappointed. We we lost that day, surely, and it was it was annoying too for a while afterwards, but that was it. Uh, I, t- I think I'd tell you what I found hardest then, John, after that, was the uh, feeling void of mm. 
no uh, county football because I was out for 13, 14 years. I, I, I gave to Monaghan and all of a sudden when, when that's over, you find yourself, I wouldn't say I had a loose end, but it's just, it's, it's different times, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd be saying in there, you know, three, it was coming up the three, four, five times a week between sweat and conditioning and uh, training on the field and then your matches at the weekend and all of a sudden when, when that's gone and and you park the bus, it's it's, it's a big fight to fill and uh, that's what I found. I actually, uh, you know, you, you'd, you'd struggle for, I struggled for a couple of years after that just, trying to fill that fight and you, you know you, every game there you'd be looking that the boys would be playing you'd be you'd be kicking football with them and you're saying oh jeez I'd love to be still there I, I feel I could I could still be there you know And but that was just you know that's just these things that goes on and goes on in your head and I, I you know I, I, I talked to a couple of ex-players you know where not only from Monaghan but from other countries John and you know we'd uh, just ask them the question about that and did you know Nine out of ten of these boys would tell the exact same thing. What I'm after telling yourself, but uh, yeah. as the years went on, it got it got better, and uh, so you know, obviously kept playing away at my club, and uh, you know, was it we got the uh, kids came along then, so uh, I had plenty of plenty of time to <laughs> fill me time. To be honest with you, John, but uh, you know, no things is good, life's good, works good, uh, and uh, that's all that that's all that uh, matters. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I suppose like I was talking, I uh, keep referencing like a lot of retired players. I suppose Tommy, you know, you do you do your club and your family, but obviously you did represent the Mon and Senior Football for what 12, 13 years, as you were saying. So how did you nearly fill the void? Like it was nearly, you know, maybe three or four nights a week. So how did you manage to fill the void in the end? I suppose family and work. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, family and work, uh, and I suppose you know. <laughs> When you have a young, young, young child in the house, it, it's it's, uh, it's it obviously it, it takes up a lot of your time. And uh, as, as I said, but you know, I I find myself, you know, as I I was lucky enough, I could go out and I train away with my my club here, Marathon Mitchells, which was which was great. And but then the the nights that you were so you when you when you be wouldn't be training with the club, the nights that you be so used to doing more, you'd train with the county, then you'd have strength and conditioning, you might have a night off, then you'd you'd have another strength and condition and then the following night you'd be training with the county. I, I, I just found myself going for, you know, going for runs in a local forest park here, doing a reef forest. I'm sure you heard of it just yeah. in, in, uh, near Kingscourt Town there. So I'd even go for a couple of runs around, as we call it, around the block here, around my own roads. And uh, that's what's that's great about living in the countryside, John, the, and we quiet roads. You can uh, you can tip about without, uh, you might run into a, a an odd tractor on trail or you know, <laughs> say why, but so that's that's what it is to live in the country. But you no, know, that's what I done. Uh, but listen, I you know, as you says, uh, I was lucky enough to have me uh, club to go back, and that uh, that took that filled a, a, a lot of voids. And uh, but listen, as t- times went on, things got easier. Now I'm I'm great. I I, I uh, just I love now. I love going and watching games and. Uh, uh, looking at them on, on on TV, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it was a tough few years after, as I said, but uh, things is good now, and uh, yeah, looking forward. I, I do like I like uh, getting out and uh, looking again. But I was lucky enough, I, you know, I, I, as I said, I kept playing away at my club football with my club there, and uh, that filled a lot of fight. So uh, yeah, still I'm involved now with on the nines. So uh, my my wee fella now is a. Uh, he be on the nine, so we we blitzes now most weekends, so uh, it it can take up a lot of times. And are you hard on him? I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm listen. I'm I'm not hard on him at all. Listen, obviously, I I I I do try and encourage him you know to get in the sport and play it. But listen, he loves it. He likes it himself. So uh, I'm not saying I don't let him not yelp at him, but no. <laughs> as I as I, as I call it, John, I'd be only trying to encourage him, but. <laughs> no, it's 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 it's. You know what? Myself and other coaches, it's something I love doing. You know, the kids are great. Sometimes the the five nights training with the county could be could be nearly easier you know, than training the young lads. But uh, but they're a great bunch of fellas. You know, definitely wouldn't can't say I'm bad about them. They're, they're good lads, and at the end of the day, John, it's all about them enjoying us. More than enough, I I always say, you know, at that age, it'll let them enjoy us. All you do is you try and go through the basic skills of the game with them, 
that's something I'll never go away from. I'll never take anything in the two series with them. And, you know, as I said, if you can't go out on to a field, if you can't fist the ball, kick a ball, solo ball, or pick a ball up, you know, you'll be, you'll be no point going on to a field. As, as I say, you know, it's, it's always, you have to uh, study, especially at kids that age, at uh, the basic skills of the game. And uh, But I'm enjoying it. The, and they're enjoying it. And, you know, as I said, it'll be serious enough soon enough. Yeah, 100%, 100%. If they ever convert you, just bring the all-star down, Tommy. That'd be the best of all. <laughs> I'd be told where to put that out really quick if that happens, John. But uh, no, no, they're great fellas. They're a good bunch of fellas. And uh, as I said, myself and you know the rest of the coaches that's with, that's with me, I, we're enjoying it. So we we actually have, we have an under-nine blitz uh, this Saturday morning coming high uh, uh in Cream Martin, they're hosting it this week. So, uh, and we actually have community games. We have entered the community games is going ahead. So, uh, I, had a, I had a friend of mine up the road here that he took control of it. They didn't know if they were going to run community games, the whole COVID thing, but uh, he sent me a WhatsApp to see if it uh, would be interested in, you know, entering the team and helping out. So, we've it, we've actually hit Friday night. So, uh, a lot, a lot happening hey, this weekend at the minute, Sean. But uh, it's good, and uh, I, uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the great thing about the GA, Tommy. And I suppose uh, your brother Damien, uh, Damien Freeman, obviously soldiered with you for many years, Tommy. So great to have the brother playing alongside you. Yeah, definitely was. Uh, you know, brilliant player, brother of my own. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you don't uh, want to be saying, you know, uh, too much about about your own brother. But you know, it, it, for me, when I when that that morning he actually came in and told me, "Let me get out of bed. You're you're coming to a challenge match." It, you know, as I said yeah earlier on, it, it was daunting going into you know to to address him into a senior setup. But you know, to, to, you know, you, knowing you had him there beside you, you know, I I know it might sound a little bit childish, but it, it, it was great. It was it was it was great to have him in. Uh, you know, it's just that he uh, he just kind of told me what to expect and what what way it is, and kind of a, you know it's going to be a, a, a step up from obviously mine on an under twenty one. So, but it was good. And Damien, yeah, Damien is still mentioning him. How he. Uh, uh, Banty came in and Banty uh, appointed Damien as captain and I have to admit brilliant leader along alongside a, lo- a lot of other you know brilliant leaders in, in the team that that team was, was was had a lot of leaders but Damien was named captain and uh, he definitely led by example and he had some engine on high up uh, up and down the field you know where uh, you know and he's just, he he great stamina high but uh, yeah Damien Damien he's another man that. Uh, it wore his heart on the sleeve like and there's one thing I, I just have to tell you about us we'd be two two, two quiet enough fellas like and so I suppose the best way I could put it John we, uh, we, we, we'd be called uh, we'd be odd fellas you know <laughs> to be honest <laughs> uh, we, I'd often come home and i often hear my own mother and father uh, would would tell us oh we were talking to such and such here and they said oh did, did, did a great crap with you there uh, one day and and my father would come out and he says, he'd say to this person, you must be special or he must have had a few drinks in him because we can't get two words out of him here at home, never mind you. Get <laughs> but, uh, but no, that was something, but uh, we, we, we were never never good losers, John. And I suppose and I suppose the best way to put that is that when when we'd lose, even at, at club level, when we'd lose a game, uh, I know, you know, you can't be a sore lose on you, but I suppose uh, what I'm saying is if we didn't play well and we thought we, you know, we kind of let your team down and didn't contribute to the team, that'd kill us. We'd come home, bag in the corner, maybe Saturday night TV, Sunday night TV, there'd be no going out. Maybe, you know, you'd be, you'd be disappointed. And not not just for your own individual, it's just that you felt that you let your teammates down. And I suppose that's not a bad trick in a player. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I like seeing players you know being disappointed and and being and and mean and being, being very disappointed especially when you lose a game i like seeing players disappointed and listen i know it's the old saying going oh, there is more important things than football and don't get me wrong there is but i believe when you when you when you, when you look when you look around as when you see 
uh, you know, players is genuinely annoyed that they lost or didn't maybe perform to the, the balance. Uh, you know, that's to me, that's a great sign of a player. I love seeing that uh, in a player. Like, but uh, that's the way we were, John. So, uh, yeah, we wouldn't be great. But getting back to Damon, great warrior, great player. Uh, he left, uh, you know, as a player, he left Evan on the pitch too. So, uh, yeah, but as I said, for me, it was great having Damien when I was first starting out. And, uh, of course, we, 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 we would have travelled to every training session that was possible together, you know, and, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a bit of banter going uh, going down uh, down the road to and uh, and coming home. So it was good. Yeah, it was great to have Damien there alongside me, John. Yeah, 100%. And I suppose, uh, last few on it uh, as well, Tommy, what do you make of the current state of affairs at the minute? I suppose maybe the commitment of the game at the minute. We're all here and it's it's probably like a like a, like a job with no pay at the end of the day, Tommy. The commitment that goes into it and I suppose the likes of, as I always reference in these podcasts, you have the likes of Wicklow, Leitrim, Carlo. You know, why do they do it? You see Leitrim a couple of weeks ago um, getting absolutely railroaded by Mayo. No, doing no one any good. So, you know, what way is the GA fixed, Tommy? Like, I know we have an exciting semi final Mayo Dublin this weekend and the potential of Kerry Throne, but Tommy, overall, and you've been around the game for so long at this stage, is the GA in a good place, like, going forward? Uh, no, it wouldn't be. Uh, to me, it wouldn't be in a great place, John. Uh, I think I, I, I think the, the Chiefs has to really sit down around that table and, and really look at the the state of affairs at the minute. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned them couple of counties and there's so m- many more, like, the likes of long for the two. We we were in that situation, John. You know, as I said, when I first started out, we were in Division 3, Division 4, and we done as much training as the these teams that was going on and winning the all runs. And that's what can be very annoying. And, you know, looking at that Leitrim Mayo game, my heart went out to Leitrim for blood. And I suppose when you... I suppose the funding... Where, where would you start, John? It's something I don't really hone in on it or get involved in but I do hear another bit I think the the funding has to be uh, something to be looked at and, and spread out you know more to the likes of these counties to try and get this uh, development going And uh, but it really starts from the grassroots up John for me it does and uh, I think the the breakdown of the the, the funds has to be uh, maybe looked at and uh Try and try and come up with a system, maybe to uh, kind of help 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 the so-called weaker counties on. Like and uh, as I said, John, don't get me wrong, we were in that situation when I first started out, and 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 it's not nice because y- you feel you you feel you're being looked down on, John, and you just do as much, and you feel you're you're as good, you know, as these players are going up and you know winning provincial titles and winning all Ireland titles and winning all stars and all this, you know, and and that can be. You know that can be very, uh, you know, very annoying, and uh, you know, it's disregarding uh, the likes of uh, these players. Like, so I, I, I'm not definitely mentioning any names, but t- them counties, the likes of the Longwoods, the Wicklows, the Leitrims, you know, not only them, the Antrims, the Sligos. After you can go on and on, they had some great individual players. So they had outstanding. They get on any team. And I'm glad you took that point up, John, and I'm glad I'm getting this point across. And I mean that. I, I, I love the names, some of the names, but I just don't want to. But they would have, you know, graced any team, that, you know, that was winning all Ireland. And, and for me, that's, that's where it can be so annoying. But I think we need to look at a strategy to try and help this on. Now, if it's saying about certain competition, I, I know there's, there's something... You know, they have worked kind of something out. If it works or not, you don't know. But going back to the other side of that, John, you know, getting different competition going. At the end of the day, when you start out training with your county, I know for me, no matter what division I was in, I wanted to compete, you know, obviously for your provincial, which you, you'd always do. Now, just talk about maybe doing that, but I don't think the, uh, the provincial will be scrapped. But at the end of the day, when you start out training, you know, in the winter months, you want to start out training and try go on and compete for Sam Maguire, no matter what county you played with, John. As a as a as a county player, that's that was all that was your goal. And it was my goal. I wanted to compete, go on out and compete for Sam Maguire. And I, I suppose there's there's players nowadays 
of, of course, do, do want to do. I, I'd feel they want to do that, but I know now there's a there's kind of work being done on a on a, for a kind of a mini a mini league, if that kind of is called a mini all Ireland, you know. And uh, will every player be happy with that? You don't know, but it's something definitely it's something, John. As I said, it has to be looked at because uh, it's very uh, degrading on the likes of a. Uh, you know, Leitrim, uh, I'm not picking on Leitrim, don't get me wrong, but there's many of the teams and there's a, a, a plenty of big scores between them. But, uh, you know, as I heard uh, one one pundit saying, you're a young Leitrim footballer going to that game in McHale Park and, and, and looking on, you know, what appetite would it give them young people, you know, to go and throw on the, 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 the county jersey when they, when they see that. It, it, it wasn't nice to see, but uh, unfortunately, that's the way it is at the minute. And uh, unless there's something done uh, sooner rather than later, to me, the funding needs to be looked at. And as I said, I don't want to repeat myself, but it needs to be uh, put in the right places where they feel is most needed. Yeah, hundred percent, Tommy. Hundred percent. It's probably for another another day's debate. I suppose. Lastly, on it, Tommy, Tommy, as I've always referenced to other people, um, when you see Dublin at the start of the year, like of Paul Mannion, Michael Darren McCauley, Jeremy Conley, and some of the gentlemen that have walked away in recent years, probably getting maybe bored of bored off the success and maybe the commitment, and then you've a Carlo lad, a Leitrim lad, and Wicklow lad setting off the start of the year, Tommy looking at the goals ahead, you get to the Leinster Championship, get knocked out and that you might have a mediocre league campaign. So sometimes at the best times, Tommy, what's it all about? Yeah, I know. It's a good question, John. It's uh, And unfortunately, I have come across uh, a couple of individuals that has said that, you know, like it, 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 they feel like, why should they train four or five nights a week when, you know, when the field are not even maybe going to win the provincial uh, uh, title, so never mind uh, compete for uh, Sam Maguire and all Ireland. It's a uh, it has gone that, and people has actually talked talked a different route out. They've uh, they've opted out of the panel, and uh, that's you know that's actually happened now this couple of years, John. And it's it's it's, uh, it's very sad to see that, very sad to hear that, but unfortunately. That's the way things are at the minute. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a tough one to call, John. Can you blame? Can you blame them? I, I, I don't want. I'm not saying they're right, but at the end of the day, they feel so. Listen, we're going to put in as much effort. The likes of the Dublins, the Kerrys, the Tyrones, the Mullins, the Donegals, you know, the Mayos, all of this, and uh, you know, it's not going to be worth. Maybe get one game, and then that's you gone, and you're after slogging for months and months, you know, through, uh, you know, in the winter months as well, it's, it's, it's not. And, you know, people have just took the option and I suppose some lads has headed off to America, you know, that can be a kind of a, a nice opportunity too, you know, John, and to go and uh, explore the world and play football. And But unfortunately, uh, just to sum it up, John, it's, I, I, it's not going to be, as I said, it's not going to be a quick fix, but hopefully now, uh, the GA can come up with uh, with with a with a good decent structure, and uh, l- uh, you know sit down and get uh, the right men around that table. That's a very very important table, John. But make sure the right men is in the right positions that that can take this uh, a whole new system that they're trying to put together and, and bring it forward and try and try and help these so-called weaker counties out because at the minute it's it's a uh, it's not it badly needed uh, at the uh, at the present time. Yeah, thanks. There's a better chance of pigs flying than the GA coming up with a solution at this stage, Tommy. By the looks of it, but uh, yeah. So we suppose, uh, Tommy, to wrap it up, uh, your club Mahara Clune, obviously yourself and Damien uh, still soldiering away, and a mate of mine from London says that uh, you're still nippy inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm slowing up a bit. I'm slowing up, but uh, I don't know. Listen, it's a uh, as, as I'm sure you know yourself, uh, John, your, your your club is very important, and our club is, uh, has always been very important to to myself and Damien. And you know, we've always uh, we've always went out and tried to perform at our highest level for Maracloon. And you know, with, I'm not saying we. Just, oh, as I said, it's like every player does 
times you go out and games, uh, things goes well for you, and there's other times things doesn't. But uh, you know, we uh, were soldiering away there. We uh, we had a tough couple of years there. With we it, obviously as well documented. I ac- actually don't want to go into it anymore. But we lost our grounds. But we're kind of going on. We're getting back on the road now. We have a, we got a training facility uh, all set up there. And uh, our new, we actually started work on our new complex. So uh, the new field is, is is on the way at the minute. So I think they're talking about maybe being ready to go with the first phase development, maybe in 2023, early 2023, hopefully. And uh, it, it's, yeah, exciting times ahead for the club. So uh, hopefully, uh, as I said, when we get up and running, uh, uh, on our new facilities, it'll uh, be good days ahead. But just on that, I have to. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank all the surrounding area, all the local clubs that that did give us the land of the pitch. I'm not naming them; they know who they are. They were named many times before, but that it was just great where we are. We're, we're actually where the club is based. We're based on on the uh, border county of you know Monaghan, Carvin, Mead, Loud, you know, and. I have to admit, every uh, every club and every one of them counties was very quick uh, to put up their hands to help us out, and uh, much appreciated. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and nice easy one to wrap up, Tommy. The best player you played with, and the toughest player you played against. Thanks, John. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> the best player I played against. There, there was many of them. Yeah, you really have me here. Uh, Ah, <laughs> oh, listen. I suppose I played against him a couple of times. I, I played against this fella in that uh, 07 game in Crow Park. I'd have to say, uh, I'd have to say, Mark O'Shea, definitely. He one of the, my toughest opponents. Uh, don't get me wrong, I had a lot, a lot of tough opponents. It was a tough question, but I'll, I'll go with definitely Mark O'Shea, tough opponent. And I suppose the the, the best player I played was. Yeah, let me see. I was really showed in there, eh? so why not? So Damien there. No. Ah, listen, yeah, Damien definitely soldiers along with him with my club and me and, 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 and the county. So uh, definitely it was a it was it was a great he was a one of the you know, good man to to have by have you have by your side. So uh, he was he was a great player and uh, yeah, so listen for the, for the crack, John, we, we leave it with that one. We, we, uh, we, we leave it with the aim, and so we will. <laughs> you'd be shot. I'm going to get some slag over that, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be shot otherwise, Tommy. You'd be shot otherwise. That McManus fella wasn't bad. <laughs> no, uh, listen, I have to admit, listen, all joking aside, uh, Conor McManus, absolutely brilliant player, you know. Un- un- unfortunately, like... Uh, he, me and him just would have been uh, maybe I know we played together for a couple of years, but Mandy probably would have been coming on to the scene as a, as a, as a young lad, obviously, and I remember it so well. And uh, I even remember we roomed on a, on a couple of trips away, you know, for league matches and that. And uh, you know, he was always going to be a great prospect. And, and as you see, the way he turned out, absolutely serious footballer. Hey? Uh, I suppose. Uh, but listen, I played with some. I played with some top players. Hey, and you know, the likes of. Owen Lennon, Dick Clark, and Paul Finley, Rory Woods, you know, uh, Desi Moans. These uh, these players, hey, it was it was uh, the 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 great players, so, uh, John. So that was actually a, that was actually a tough question now to answer. But so listen, here uh, we'll I think of a well uh, well covered by this stage, hopefully. Hundred <laughs> percent, Tommy. Hundred percent, Tommy Freeman. Thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgoretro.com and Attack Sports. Use my promo code JMAC Podcast to get 15% off on orgoretro.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack.ie. Be attack minded. Tommy, that was a privilege. Thank you, John. Good having you. Thanks for having us. See you later. Cheers, Tommy.